Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling School Podcast, the coolest wrestling podcast. In the jungles of Colombia, how are you today, Santi? I'm better than you. Damn, you yeah, sound I know. like ass. I my well, I, I feel like my reaction is to LA Knight. You know, LA Knight slowly coming down. I am feeling that, but hey, the new day is being booed out the building. Santi, thoughts? Uh, who would have had this on their bingo card for 2024? This is such a cool turn of events. One of the things that we try to hit home when we talked about this topic last week was that the dismantling and the destruction of Big E was necessary mm -hmm. for the professional health of both Xavier's and Kofi's career so that they could start something new without the ever looming question of when is Big E going to come back? You guys aren't as good without Big E. Blah, 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 blah. Now that that's out the window, we might have the hottest heel act in the business and one of the things that shocks me sancho mm. is how many people didn't know how good xavier and kofi can be as heels but it also is a testament of how long ago that was because there's probably so many wrestling fans that do not remember the new day were hilarious awesome really entertaining heels and we're just kind of revisiting what? this tale of the new day you get you oh you know people did it you you didn't know you no, didn't no. know no, i just didn't like what they were doing in 2024. you you may be on the new day train now but we cannot forget the past i am like triple h <laughs> booking i cannot forget the past <laughs> that you literally called everything bum ass at the very oh, start you're, of it you're, you're i'm wcw trying to make their yeah. way into wwe yeah. uh, i hope i get booked well uh, yeah. i'm buff bagwell i'm booker <laughs> t i'm scott steiner oh look at this great shiny place that i've been invited to the wwe buried that's you right yeah, now yeah. you will let me flourish as being a member of the new day train yeah, anymore I, I literally saw sandman's in Entrance at 2000 Royal Rumble. I'm like, oh yeah, dude, sick entrance. Comes in, Kindle sticks two people, then gets tossed out of the Rumble. That's you. <laughs> that is literally you. But yeah, dude, it, what an incredible. I just, for me, it just tells me that anybody could be heel. Anybody. All it takes is the right kind of explosive start launch pad. And for me, just to talk about it later, I think that that's going to be the goal for CM Punk is to turn heel some way because Seth Rollins tried and people were still chanting CM Punk. But to continue on with New Day, yes, Xavier and Kofi do have that experience to be annoying heels and that's how they started. But the one thing I'm really looking forward to is what are they going to say? Because I could tell that Kofi and Xavier had something to say and then they called an audible in the ring and like, you know what, dude, let's just go ahead. <laughs> what did we do? Exactly. What did I do? We didn't do. We didn't do anything. <laughs> Why do you sound like a troll? You look like a troll trying to offer me something and that I don't want, like an NPC troll. <laughs> with that stance. But no, I, I think like they, they call an audible and it's like, you know what? We could milk this. They could go for weeks about, hey, we're trying to tell you why we did this. And every crowd around the nation could just boo them out of the building. I, I agree. And I do believe that this is way better booze and heat than what Dominic Mysterio really? is getting. Uh, and I know that's saying a lot, but it hear is. me out for a second. They're equally as loud, I would say, but the Dominic, dude, I'm winded from being that troll. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like trying to catch my breath work on your here. cardio, bro. Um, but the Dominic Mysterio heat that he gets, it's almost for the memes, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's what it's what you're supposed to do. Just like how you're supposed to chant "You suck" whenever Kurt Angle came out, right? It's a just expected crowd interaction to boo Dominic Mysterio, but that's not the case with the New Day. It might become that now that they've done the shtick of like they aren't able to talk because the boos are so loud. But that particular night in general was just really executed brilliantly by the WWE because there were so many little moments backstage leading into them coming out that basically flipped the switch for the fans and told them, you're supposed to boo these guys out of the goddamn planet. Mm -hmm. right, we had the moment at the beginning with one of the virtues of morality of the WWE, Alpha Academy, right? They're always good, shunning the New Day. And then the ultimate like, like baby face of morality in the WWE Cody Rhodes telling them that you guys should be ashamed. I and then that. they both 
And then they, it was so corny. It, yeah, it really was. was. It was. But but it did the job, right? Like, hey, right. Cody is the guy that's supposed to that's supposed to be like the the good guy, right? And if the good guy clearly says you're not good, then okay, we know where the new day stands with the with the WWE universe. And then the kicker was them bullying Stu, John Cena's camera guy. Yeah. Wait, because, because you're John Cena's buddy, that you could that you, you don't have to point the camera. Oh, dude, dude, doing? solid Xavier impression. Solid. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate solid. that. It was the same as my troll impression. Why? It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think it's, it's you were standing there with like a troll. Yeah. Was it because I was doing like the the, yeah. the troll mannerisms? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, but I I think that you're right. They kind of said everybody, hey, you got to boo these guys. But ten years, and I love the response from New Day, bro. Ten years of being good, and just one day of whatever that we did, you just turn on us. And I was saying during the watch party, I was like, you're adding more fuel to their heel turn fire. You're letting them kind of dig their heels in the sand to say, we're in the right here. Look at all these people suddenly turning on us for after 10 years of good service and now we're the bad guys? No, 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 that ain't right. And I love that and I cannot wait to see what is their new attire, what is their new theme, what is their new entrance vibe? so many questions for me going forward and it keeps me locked into the new day i felt that that monday night raw i was sitting on my hands i was like where's the new day i want more of the new day i i let's get this wrestling out the way i want to know here from xavier and kofi you know you mentioned like new attire new entrance theme i'm glad that they didn't come out with that like on this episode because it would be really easy to just follow the wrestling trope of scarier sounding entrance theme and darker <laughs> clothes equals you have to boo them right they came out expecting the ovation that they always get mm -hmm. and they came out with the same types of clothes that they always have they came into uh the arena smiling like they always do yeah but all of a sudden something has changed and everything changed around them except in their brain Right. They're justified. They think that they're right. And I love the what you mentioned, you know, all it takes is one bad day. That's a that's a famous quote from from the Joker. Right. All it takes is one bad day. That's the Harvey Dent story arc. Oh, one bad day look at that. To, to, to go from like the beacon Gotham's white knight into two face. So uh, it, it, it's fundamentally true. Like one bad day could change the optics of how you are perceived by society in general and that's where we are with the new day it's almost honestly like triple h is good there's things that he's bad at right oh, something sure. he's bad at booking mr and miss money in the banks you yeah. suck ass triple h you can't do that what he's really good at is booking and writing for uh relatable heels I, mm. I totally get where the new day is coming from. I totally get where Kevin Owens is coming from. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. get it. I totally, I get where Solo Sokoa was coming from when he said, dude, like you left. Right. What was I supposed to do? Just like not do anything? Let the family splinter? I just took over and protected the family. Triple H has gotten really good at booking sympathetic heels, heels with good motivations that aren't just twirl your mustache. <laughs> We're bad for the sake of being bad. And I think that that's just leading to really interesting narratives and i'm very curious to see what we do with the new day sancho because mm. right now this is good right like the interaction between between the new day and the fans that's the feud right now right mm -hmm. that's the feud mm -hmm. but what's the wrestling feud for the new day what's the thing that's going to get them in the ring and keep us engaged in a narrative between the New Day and other wrestlers. I'd be very curious if you have something. I do. I do. Alpha Academy has to be the first sacrificial lamb. Just to show that they're a little bit edgier. They're more um, brutal in the ring. And I do foresee, in order to put this a little bit more, more heat, is Xavier has to win a singles gold somewhere. Not a tag team gold. Sure, they could run rough shot. But to show that the New Day are changed and they're making right moves in terms of just being more successful as heels someone has to win singles gold and the best person to do that is put a belt on xavier woods with heel tactics by kofi kingston that has to happen yeah. we got to get more into it we got to feel like no they're going the wrong path and even though they have early fool's gold they are still going the wrong path and it's not leading to that place where they should be at i i'm kind of with you on there i'm not necessarily 
sold on Xavier Woods. It's a big leap. Win. It's 100% it's, a big it leap. It is. Yeah. Just, and, it, and really, the only reason why it's a big leap is because of like where titles are right now and how far removed the New Day is from that. So we might be looking at somewhere down the line in 2025. Uh, but I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it. It's just it's something that's kind of difficult to envision. Oh, Another thing sure. that I liked from from this segment from the New Day and like their further like adage of justification is, but like we didn't we we could have but we didn't hit him with a steel chair. We could have used the sledgehammer and and we didn't do that. Why do you guys hate us? Yeah. Again, it's kind of playing on those traditional heel turn tropes that mm -hmm. we're used to, right? If this is this is kind of uncharted territory. Um, shout out to Nathan Drake. Great game, Uncharted. Great series. Great series. Uh. It's uncharted territory when it comes to high, uh, such a high-profile heel turn for it to not involve something physical. or And by physical, I don't just mean an attack. I already said it, right? New music change, new attire. We don't have the physical manifestation of a heel turn. True. We have just the mentality shift. And the perception of a character is now that of a heel. And this is really interesting, really new. You could do a lot of unique new things with where we're going with the new day here i mean nakamura had that traditional heel turn came out attacked la knight looked more sinister had the poison mist diy which we'll talk about had the more traditional heel turn turning on more city with a low blow with by gargano so i like that triple h could cover all different realms but this feels like high high class high class dining this feels michelin star ass like ooh. I'm hearing notes of a heel turn. I'm feeling these, mm, like it feels the, decadent. The rich mahogany. Yes, yes. <laughs> ah, but like, uh, like just to talk about wrestling in general, there's always a heel turn where a faction comes in, like John Moxley when the Death Riders just coming in, just taking over, like uh, the Outsiders coming in and taking Trying to over. Poison and murder Orange Cassidy. Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> like, like there's so a variety of scope of things, and even Karrion Cross, who's more of just a ninja, like a silent ninja type of poisoning and brain rotten everybody. I'm enjoying the variety, I would say, of Triple H's heels. And we joke so much in the wrestling school community about Drew McIntyre, where I was like, he's not a heel. It's because he was a justified heel. He was believing, and you believe. When you see their side, it's great. And just to go back to your Joker thing, I was like, it's in my mind. He goes, all you just need is a little push. That's all they need. And that was what Karrion was doing. But then I thought about Christian Bale. Where he's like, no, it can't be me. And he moves, <laughs> remember? And he moves the face I back. Know, I know. <laughs> uh, dude, how many times? We've referenced The Dark Knight. So it's, many times. It's in this a podcast. great movie. It's a saw. I saw, I saw a movie like five times in the movie theater when it came out. Dark Knight Rises, overhated. Overhated. It's overhated. It, I'm not saying it's good. It's overhated. There's too many villains. They shoehorned a lot Fire of action. Rises. And Bane and Bane went out like a punk, bro. He went out like a punk off screen. Come on now. They're expecting one of us in the wreckage, brother. The problem is <laughs> is that they shoved everything into one movie when it should have been two movies. Because, like, mm. Christian Bale gets his back broken, and you're like, oh, that's it. And then he does a Rhea Ripley return. <laughs> he does. I broke my back. Final. And he does make a Rhea Ripley <laughs> return. Does. And then Talia al Ghul is a thing. The return of the League of Shadows. It, it was a little bit too much. I, I, I'm with you on there. Yeah. Anyways, I kind of want to put like uh, Triple H returns music, like the the sound of Triple H or John Cena coming back to Christian Bale as <laughs> Batman coming back. Like uh, it kind of works. <laughs> Wrestling's everywhere, brother. What can I say, dude? It is. Uh, somebody asked me like, okay, like what should I get? Like what should I try to get into if I want to get into wrestling? Like where should yeah. I start? And I literally told them Cobra Kai. <laughs> like you don't you don't have to start with wrestling if you're like if you if you're you know intimidated by how much there is. If you can like Cobra Kai as a show, you will just like professional wrestling. It, it's, it is professional wrestling just in a slightly different uh, produced medium. Wrestling is everywhere, as you said. So Johnny Lawrence is a justify heel. No wonder he, he hates the karate kid, Raf Macchio, dude. He stole his girl, LaRusso. Dude, he was in the right the entire time. Uh, just like some of the, the different heels that we're, that we're going to be talking about today. Because we've got so much more to talk about here in this episode of the Wrestling Is Cool podcast. Coolest wrestling podcast on the planet. You could, of course, be listening to the podcast. Wow. 
<laughs> you could, of course, be listening to this podcast three days earlier than everywhere else over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Santi's app. Over there, you're going to get the podcast three days early, the Raw reviews, the SmackDown reviews, the Five Wrestling is Cool Match Club watch-alongs, the Undertaker Streak watch-along, the Royal Rumble watch-along. So much content that never gets uploaded on free feeds like YouTube. So come check it out, patreon.com slash Santi's app. $5 doesn't just get you in the door. It gets you all of the content that we produce the lowest tier gets you everything that we create in terms of content so come on by there are different tiers of course if you'd like to support us more with additional perks but if all you want is the content the five dollar tier gets you in yes sancho i wanted to say and we are interactive in the patreon comments as well and we kind of threw this out how much spit or water has triple h has spit out and fight nerd from patreon commented he convinced ChatGPT to estimate this, and he says, basically, the activity level varied over time. In a given time, he became more prominent figure in 1999, right? We were trying to figure, like, he started spitting around this time. And he said, ChatGPT has estimated 960 matches between 1999 and 2010, and then in return, about 180 matches between 2011 and 2019. So, 1,140 uh, matches from 1999 to 2019, right? Estimating the amount of water spit per entrance. Triple H's entrances, he takes two mouthful of waters before spinning it out. The average mouthful of water is about 20 milliliters. He performs his action twice, as I said, resulting in about 40 milliliters per water per entrance. So calculating the total water spit between per match is about 40 milliliters. Total matches from the thing, 11, uh, 1100. Let's do the math. He uses 45,600 milliliters. Converted into liters, that's 45.6 liters of water spit throughout Triple H's career from 1999 to 2019. In American terms, about 11 gallons. Mm -hmm. There you go, folks. Not only do you that's get what you're missing. entertaining. That's what you're that's missing. What you're missing. That's what you're missing. You, you, this is what you get, the beautiful mathematics yeah. of wrestling. We figured out how much water Triple H has spit, how much Pinkai uh, Rikishi has estimatedly yes. given the planet with his, <laughs> with his stink face. There, there's just so much. So much in this community and we're going to be doing more community things because uh here towards the end of the year we're going to be doing our wikis our wrestling is cool award wiki, wiki. show where wiki, we'll wiki, announce wiki. the the different categories patrons will be able to vote etc but yeah it should be a it should be a good set of episodes as well but yeah go check it out patreon.com slash santi's app mm -hmm. sancho one of the things that i wanted to talk about which actually will open up the door for the different topics that we have here is this concept of an anchor being it was introduced Ooh. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You're right. Again, here we are talking about uh, here we are talking about comic book movies, where there is a being within every multiverse that is so important to the narrative of everything that goes on there that if they were to die or be removed, the that universe basically crumbles and storylines just don't work. Yes, Sancho. So, for example, it'd be Stone Cold and the Attitude Era. Sure, I think yes. that's a that's a great example. I think yes. another example. I, I mean, it, it's a simple one, but Batman in the Batman trilogy. Obvious. That's okay. like a super okay. obvious one, right? If yes. you want to go with something really, really obvious. Yes. But I'd like to present to you mm -hmm. the idea that in 2024, the anchor being of the WWE is none other than the Tribal Chief Roman so, oh, Reigns. Oh, sorry. I'm so used to Sol Sokoa being the Tribal Chief. No, 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 no. Yeah. The real, sorry, the OTC. Okay, there you the go. The original, the, or, the only Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. I want you to hear me out here for a second, all right? Roman Reigns, obviously the big face of the WWE for such a long time. But when you break down everything that's happening in the WWE today, all of the most important storylines that are basically carrying the WWE forward in this day and age, they all kind of revolve around Roman Reigns. So let's start off with one of the biggest feuds and storylines of the year that we've had, which is the rise of Sola Sokoa as the new tribal chief, Bloodline 2.0. Him feuding with all of the baby faces, taking out Paul Heyman, feuding with Cody Rhodes, of course, feuding with Roman Reigns. That doesn't exist if it weren't for Solo Sokoa having been part of the bloodline, being groomed and, and raised to be the next tribal chief by Roman Reigns, that is a moment, a storyline that is created by the sheer existence of Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. Even if Roman wasn't there for that majority of that story. There's story number one. Story number two. We have... And this, this might seem like a shock. Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. One of the biggest storylines of the year. 
at face value, they have no connection to Roman Reigns. But Drew McIntyre's entire spiral into the amazing character that he became came off the back of people refusing to hate Jey Uso for all of the things that happened to that all the things that he caused when he was a part of the bloodline. It brought back all of those dark memories when Drew McIntyre lost at Clash of the Castle 2022. It created this cynical, angry, Scottish psychopath that ultimately became the Drew McIntyre that we know today that had that amazing trilogy feud of the year contender with CM Punk. That's story number two. Next up, we have everything that's going on between Seth Rollins and CM Punk. We didn't need Roman Reigns in the picture for this to be a thing, but now it's been accelerated by just the sheer fact that CM Punk and Roman Reigns teamed up with one another. It's escalated that feud to something beyond, I don't like CM Punk. It's escalated into, you helped Roman Reigns, you're a piece of trash, now we're going to feud. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. another one of those storylines. So now I'm talking, I'm talking about storylines that are developing on shows on different nights that Roman isn't even a part of that are the biggest part of Monday Night Raw. But then we can go over to Friday Night SmackDown. The entire impetus of this fantastic Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens storyline is the sheer existence of Roman Reigns. All of the things that Roman did to Kevin Owens, all the things that Roman did to Cody Rhodes, but then Cody Rhodes still teaming up with Roman Reigns. And here we are, one of the biggest feuds in the WWE that exists because of Roman Reigns, even though Roman Reigns is not at all in the feud in any way, shape or form whatsoever. Sami Zayn and Drew McIntyre, all the stuff with Jey Uso, the, how, the additional rise of Bronson Reed. It all circulates around the gravitational pull, the monumental gravitational pull of one Roman Reigns. It is an impressive thing to say that Roman Reigns is the driving force for like pretty much all of the main event stories outside of anything that's happening with Gunther mm -hmm. in the WWE today. And he's not even a part of them, which is crazy. It just shows the power of the tribal chief as a character and as a narrative piece that WWE has built ever since Seth Rollins put that chair in his back all the way back 10 years ago. What do you think? You're forgetting the Judgment Day and Bloodline have a little bit of sauce between them. Remember when Paul Heyman goes, authorized, and he shook hands mm. with Rhea Ripley. So there's a little bit of that taste, but... I kind of hear you, I feel you, but may I present another wrestler? Please. Um, Kerry and Cross. <laughs> oh, 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 what do you mean? What, no, 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 no. Kerry and Cross. He might, he might be the anchor being of the mid card. Yes, he, he 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 had a strap match with Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre turned heel. He had a running with Nakamura. Nakamura's heel. He had a little running with AJ. AJ turned heel for a little temporary. He had a match with uh, Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo now is a heel, and then the Miz. Now he's a heel who's trapped with the final testament he seemed to can't get out. And, of course, the New Day. I like that. Karrion Cross is the anchor being of the mid card. Who's the anchor mm. being of the women's division? Is it Rhea? Ooh. Yeah, it, ooh. No, I don't think that it's Rhea. Ooh. I think there's a strong case to be made for it to be Bailey. Right? They, hear me out. Hear me out, right? All right, like all, right, right. all, all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bailey is the one that, again, in storyline – helped create the likes of EO Sky, who's Damage this control. main eventer yes. in the yeah. WWE, which then in turn on on in, in storyline brought Kyrie Sane into the picture. It elevated Dakota Kai, somebody that will likely be competing for the Women's Intercontinental Championship. She has this generational beef with Bianca Belair, a beef that has made Bianca Belair, frankly, the most interesting she's ever been because she's not just superwoman, she is somebody that's a bit more of a complicated character. She doesn't just trust everybody. She isn't just the smiling do-gooder of everything. She has misplaced, misguided trust because of everything that she went through with Bailey. And we can talk about the four horsewomen. We can talk about Mercedes Monet over in AEW. Mm -hmm. We have Charlotte, Becky Lynch, that all revolve around many moments created with the help of Bailey. So I, I present to thee, Bailey. 
and again, this is not the best wrestler that is pushing the entire era. It's necessary without them, we wouldn't get all these splinter points. Very Correct. interesting. Correct. Interesting. I mean, I feel like um, it's a very interesting argument to consider because maybe Stone Cold is not the answer for the Attitude Era. It could be argued that it could be maybe The Rock. Maybe it's The Big Show. Big Show did cause a lot of problems in the Attitude Era. Could Don't, be Brett. It could be could Brett. Could be Brett. That's true. Without him, we right? wouldn't have Stone Cold. We wouldn't have Vince as a character, like as an on-screen authority evil figure. It right. could be Brett, right? Though you have to think a little bit more deeply Deeper, aside yeah. from just more most popular, right? Mm. And it's really easy to just say that. It just so happens that Roman is in that category of most popular, uh -huh. but Roman also fits the the attributes of what makes somebody an anchor being. So it'd be WCW, be Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall. I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could say Eric Bischoff, maybe if you, uh, you you could. Like, you have to really, really like pe peel layers and 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 this might be a reference that goes over people. It won't over you. And just kind of understand how deep the six degrees of Kevin Bacon goes with the individual. Why do you that say you that? Pick. Is it because I'm older? Yes. Okay. I, I'm not even, I, don't even, I don't even have enough energy to fight it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that's a term I use. So it's also for my generation, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. The six degrees of John Cena. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's probably – honestly, there's probably – a, a better case to be made for I bet you we could find more intriguing six degrees with Bailey than John Cena no way yeah because of her time in NXT okay I, I, and, and now the the fact that uh Mercedes Monet went to New Japan went to AEW and and made connections with people that Cena would have never made connections with because he never left the WWE but then there's obviously like his Hollywood career and stuff. Um, but if we keep it to strictly wrestling, I bet you that there's more anchor beings than John Cena. I'm trying to figure out who would be the male six degrees then. Like maybe Kevin Owens? Because he's just, maybe Sami Zayn? Mm, Cody maybe, Rhodes is not a, a bad AJ. one. It's AJ. A oh, it's AJ. It's, AJ. it's definitely it's AJ. It's 100% AJ. Yeah. It, it's 100% AJ. But yeah, it's an interesting uh, like thought exercise to just sort of try and break down who is like, the being that has caused so many of the narratives that we are in today. True. I think it's Roman. I think it's Roman Bailey. Cool. It's a cool thought exercise. But speaking of all of those storylines, dude, Punk and Rollins is one of those, right? Mm. Punk and Rollins is one of those storylines that if you really want to break it down, you could attribute it and create a connection to Roman Reigns. Yeah. But it doesn't need that. It doesn't need that. We had back and forths on this episode of monday night raw punk with an individual interview rollins i didn't, I didn't like that i didn't uh, like the that. ring I, I didn't like it either i'd like to hear why you did not i i feel that it was a, a, a wasted uh, opportunity to be in the ring i feel like these things could have be told to each other in their face and it would have hit harder if punk came out and started doing thing and then Seth did his thing and interrupted and if punk said hey man you remember you came to me when you were 16 years old and asked for my help and i didn't ask for any money from you and i helped you out like all these things that could have been said the same thing but to each other because then it would have hit so much harder to see what is Seth Rollins reaction to being told I helped you out when you're 16 to being then Seth Rollins replies like hey dude you left us you left us high and dry you left me on red you ghosted me for 10 years and then you tried to tear down this company for those 10 years and now you're coming back and why because of money and you even said so yourself and this is what i feel that the two hour raw has robbed us from is allowing those moments breathe we literally had one of the best raw segments which could be the best segment of the year of punk drew mcintyre and Rollins at the same time. And they were just talking for like 30 plus minutes, it felt like, unfiltered. And I feel like that is where Seth Rollins and CM Punk shines the most. Not in these control settings. And you could tell that Seth Rollins doesn't have that same oomph, that same turbo, nitro, whatever you want to call it, promo when he's not standing across the ring from CM Punk. And at the same time, you see that it when Seth Rollins is by himself, yeah, CM Punk chants go wild, and it shouldn't be that way. You may argue that the reason why they did that is so Seth Rollins and Sami Zayn could squash the beef so they could move on, but I still think there was a, a better way to do that. But for me, it felt like it lost the thunder. Just like I had a problem, and I know I'm alone on this, about the cinematic sit-down between Roman and CM Punk. Like, that kind of stuff, you need the crowd to feed that energy, to feed that hype. And it just felt strange to see 
Seth and CM Punk not together. And I know they're teasing us. It's another baby step thing that Triple H does. But I feel like we could have got so much juice out of the promos if they were together. Delivering the same thing. Yeah, I don't want to say that it was a misstep, but it just wasn't a very big step forward compared to the step. ones that they've taken taken before. I will say, um, I was looking, how do I say this? When it comes to the back and forth, if they want to talk about like the past connection with each other, I'm looking more for not what we're getting right now, but I'm looking more for like punk MJF. When they were going back and forth in their promos, MJF talking about how he was CM Punk's biggest fan, went to like the signings, had all the shirts, all of this stuff, right? It felt more personal, and they did that face to face in the ring. The CM Punk stuff and and Seth Rollins, the reasons that Seth Rollins laid out as to why he hates CM Punk in this promo didn't land with me. It didn't match. So his energy he, when when CM Punk first came back in Survivor Series. Yeah, it really didn't. And maybe if Punk had been across from the ring from him, it might might have landed a bit better. But, like, if I break it down, you ghosted me when you left. Oh, Boo-hoo. Good <laughs> God. You baby. You're a grown-ass adult. And you're crying <laughs> because somebody left you on red? Cry me a freaking river, Seth Rollins. Real glass. Real glass. I tweeted out a, a, a tweet that went kind of viral. It was like Seth Rollins in 2014 and then a picture of Stan from Eminem's uh, music <laughs> video. Dear Punk, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. I left my cell, my pager, and my home phone at the bottom. Like, baby. Giant ass baby. Grow up. That doesn't land with me. The other thing that doesn't land with me is, and you came back for money. Oh, I'm sorry, Seth. Are you there for charity? Everyone there is working. I mean, I just don't like the demon, the the demonization of somebody wanting to do something for money. That doesn't, that will never land with me. Patreon, and maybe is because I, you know, like I've worked hard ass jobs, dude. I want to get paid for what I do, and I'm not gonna demonize CM Punk or anybody because they're doing their job for money. Never do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that like they need to really dig into and here's the thing sancho they can't and they can't dig into it is all of the negative things that cm punk said about the wwe when he left that will actually well, hit home and i just don't think that they're willing to go there not yet i don't i don't think they got the balls oh they will I really i hope so i hope so because that's that's the juice right that's what will catapult this into nuclear levels of heat but talking about cm punk leaving him on red and wanting to do this for money like bro i i was there like watching raw screaming shut up do you, do you My think god you think they did that so they could relate to the younger audience like oh man you left them on red dog no way like that kind of vibe Maybe perhaps didn't, didn't work because everybody started chanting CM Punk after he listed out all of his grievances. See, but that's it like completely backfired. That's one thing. I think if CM Punk was there, they could have got into the real juice. This was it felt scripted because he wasn't there. And you have to remember, dude, Seth Rollins has literally called CM Punk a cancer, a cancer. He literally said in interviews, I don't want him back. We don't need him. We're doing just well without him before his return like years later so like years before a year or so before his return so that's the kind of juice that's what you want you want the yes. you want the tea you want the nitty gritty you want the stuff that shouldn't be said you want the stuff that cm punk will have problems with years from now in a podcast <laughs> yeah i 100 percent. like dude think about like when they first faced off it was gold didn't it didn't it feel taboo it felt dirty like we like this was wrong yeah that these two were, were were after all of the things that they said about one another separate from one another now they're in the ring it just felt wrong and because it felt so wrong oh sancho it felt so right yeah but this felt manufactured mm -hmm. and it didn't land with the me. same with cm punk's interview it felt mm, it didn't feel like this is the cm punk's real grievances you know didn't really feel real it's that's the thing i i feel like sometimes wwe tends to meddle too much into things just let let the thing go man let them see where they go and and beat off of that that's what made drew punk and rollins so good it's like they let them go they towed the line you, you remember he was uh, wanted to talk about vince they told that yeah. line. say his name say go, his ahead. Name. go <laughs> ahead so th i think that is where we're i think um it's a holding pattern we're waiting it's a mania thing that they can't uh, they can't 
show all their cards. And we're just, but then we, why we just start? Wanted, that's what I mean. Like, why start now? But then why start? Then yeah. why start? If you're not, if you're not ready to put the pedal to the metal, don't like just you out of sight, out of mind is totally fine. It's great. Like we, we can get to this when we need to, uh, because this is one of those feuds that I don't think you, me and the rest of, uh, of, of WWE fans want baby steps in. I'm totally, you know what I'm totally okay with. I'm totally okay. in like in the four months leading up to mania, they have one interaction a month maybe even less, and then they ramp it up the closer they get to Mania. We don't need interactions between them every single week if you're just going to do little minuscule steps forward because this is not what this story warrants. People want the people want the forbidden when it comes to these two, it, the forbidden fruit. People want to feel like, like this, like this is real. This is one of those feuds mm -hmm. that we want to feel like we're behind the curtain because that's what it felt like when it was Seth, Drew, and, and Punk. That's what it was like when Punk initially came back to the WWE. This, he didn't text me back. This, uh, you know, I protected him when, when he was one of the 10 to be fired and I shielded him. That, it, that line might have landed better in person. Yeah. It, but the way that they did it, this asymmetrical promo against one another, uh, the the points that they were delivering weren't strong or beefy enough to carry by themselves. They needed the back and forth to take those points of like, you left me on red. Maybe we get Punk's response because I never cared about you because yeah. like you were meaningless to me then. Yeah. You know, like we could have gotten something mm -hmm. like Punk's perspective to help elevate why the grievance of being left on red matters because on its own you just a little bitch that got left on red that's how i see it it, it kind of reminds me of uh, logan paul and the rock you know the rock logan paul feels like the rock abandoned him and i feel they could have dig into that more after seth rollins injury he could have said i reached out to you again you didn't care but there, there's like so many opportunities to lean into that but i think they don't they don't scrap until rumble I think that's the only time they get physical. I hope so. You think they? You think they? Uh, one of them eliminates the other. I think they start. They end up in the final four. They have to. They have oh, to. Oh, that'd be so good. It'd be, be so, so good. good. And if you want to get even spicier, they're the final two, and that would be interesting as well because the one v ones in the Royal Rumble I find are the most. They make the Royal Rumble so special. Um, the only one I kind of feel like I didn't feel special from at the time and i watched it live was gunther and cody it didn't feel because we knew that at that point that cody was going to win but punk and rollins at the end i don't think they get they eliminate each other i hope it's not like punk eliminates somebody else and rollins comes in and goes bah! <laughs> like i don't want that like <laughs> it's the, it's the worst thing for royal rumbles the best of the best should go toe to toe like Taker and Sean, man. Taker and Sean, which it's just on the top of mind because I just watched it for Royal Rumble review on Patreon. Taker and Sean going out in 2007, just chills, man. Just so good. Sean Michaels in San Antonio, Texas, going for his third Royal Rumble win against the dead man. Like, come on, man. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm getting hyped thinking about it. It was a tremendous thing. And I think Seth Rollins and Punk could be that again. And it should be the catalyst to get them into mania at the, what happened in Royal Rumble. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think you and I are on, on the same page here. Mm -hmm. it, the, the segment was too much of a tippy toe forward. Maybe it's just too early to start doing this, but eventually we know, right? We know that this is going to be amazing. I just would like for them to, uh, to hit on those points that feel wrong in the Ooh. best types of ways. Uh, but that's what I mean. It, it, you need to hit those points so CM Punk is the heel in this fight. Seth Rollins needs to be the face. He's represented WWE, essentially. Mm. 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 But maybe mm. we're looking at somebody that is so right that they turn heel because we've seen Triple H be really good at booking those people, right? Maybe we end up getting that with Seth Rollins. He's so right and no one else sees how right he is that he's the one that turns heel. Look, not every he tried heel really be that way. Yeah, look, every like Seth Rollins tried to get the to get the crowd on his side and it it, didn't it failed. Work. Yeah. It failed miserably. And Unfortunately for Seth Rollins, even though I agree he should be the babyface, CM Punk 
could punt a bunch of babies and people would chant CM no, Punk. No, not if not if the, he be just becomes too political in the WWE game. If he yes, if he leads into that's... like getting Triple H and get like again, Paul Heyman is that catalyst. The favor. What is the favor? Oh, he schemes his way to the main event. He I finds agree. a trick. He cheats out. Remember how upset we were when The Rock came out and took Cody's spot at the Rumble. 100%. It needs that level of thievery from Punk to for us to hate him. Like, how dare you, sir, hurt the sacrilegious, or the sacrilegious Royal Rumble spot for the Mania. It needs that level. I, I agree. I agree. The thing is, is that what Seth Rollins is doing is Punk is mean. He's a <laughs> bad dude. And, he, and everybody collectively is like, yeah, that's why we liked them in the first place. Pointing those things out isn't going to get the crowd to turn on him. Mm -hmm. But like you said, a more political punk, a punk that's willing to take more than his fair share, mm -hmm. that could actually be a fair catalyst. I I, I don't hate it. Ooh. I don't hate the idea of punk being, being the heel, but it's not going to work with what they're doing with Rollins right now. If punk is a bad dude. Do you think punk wears a suit? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't Why not? So. What if you wore a three-piece suit? That would make him like, like instantly. That makes you like a heel. That's what if you too, start? Too what if you start dressing like Cody a little bit? You know, mm. 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 Punk could do it though. That's what I'm saying. Punk has it in his his bag that he could be a heel. He we saw it with Taker, right? Taker and Punk, right? He did oh, he's so good. things. He was, oh, that was like Toral mustache. Yeah. Punk, but he can play it all. He yeah. can absolutely play it all. Straight edge uh, Punk as well. Yeah. Let's let's move on to talk about one of these other Roman Reigns is the anchor being of this <laughs> feud, Cody and Kevin Owens. But I wanted to talk a little bit deeper about this feud, not like what you like about yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, who you think is going to win. I want to talk more a little bit about the existence of the undisputed championship in this feud because you had some interesting thoughts on this. Yeah, I was kind of mulling over what we're going to talk about in today's Wrestling School podcast. Yeah. And I sat there and I said... Why is everyone not like really into this feud? Because this feud is really good. Like it's it's cooking, and I see a lot of comments on it. They're like, "Oh, they're taking too long. This feud's overstated. It's welcome." And I'm just wondering, is it because that Cody's the undisputed champion? Is it because that we know that Cody versus Kevin Owens? There's no way that Kevin Owens is going to beat Cody at Saturday Night's main event. And I wonder what would happen if we're playing this multiverse type thing, if we entered a timeline where Cody wasn't an undisputed champion going into this year's slew of feuds. Like think about the catalog of matches that Cody has had and imagine if he wasn't a champion during the thing. And, you, and it's funny because every time you talk about Cody Rhodes, there's always that, I'm not being a Cody hater, but, but I just wonder if we would be on board with Cody more. Like the fight with AJ Styles, the fight with... Kevin Owens that's about to come up. I just wonder that, dude. Like, is it is it the undisputed problem of having it and not being Roman Reigns that everyone's just seemingly not into Cody Rhodes as high as they should be? Perhaps. I want you to think of Roman Reigns' matches and feuds after WrestleMania 39. Okay. Right, the feud with Jey Uso, the feud with LA Knight, the yeah. feud with AJ Styles, Randy Orton uh, at the Rumble, all of those matches that he had for the Undisputed Championship. The problem was, even though you were excited to see those two in the ring, the problem was the title. That no way Roman Reigns was going to lose this before Cody. he gets to yeah. WrestleMania 40. It mm -hmm. was kind of like a foregone conclusion that as interesting and as entertaining as the feud could be, we knew that one thing was for certain, which mm -hmm. was Roman retaining. And that certainty kind of dampened whatever narratives they were telling leading into the match. And I feel like that's what's happening here. Because at least I feel that there's no way that Cody Rhodes is losing the undisputed championship in this match. No way whatsoever. And because of that, it does make Kevin Owens by default seem less threatening. Mm -hmm. Even though the narrative that they're telling going into this is that this is the scariest, most threatening version of Kevin Owens ever. And Cody Rhodes is in danger. And he would be in danger. <laughs> I'm in danger. Under, <laughs> I'm in danger under 99.9% .9 of circumstances, except we're in that circumstance where he has the undisputed title. And it gives him plot armor, Sancho. 
Plot oh, armor you're right. ruins plots. You're right. You're right. This man is running through the explosions unhinged, unscathed. Dude, he's Jon Snow in the Battle of the Bastards. Dude, that was a sick episode, though. It oh, was, my God. He should have, he, how does he not die when he's getting mauled by a thousand Dude, people? He's being he's suffocated. Been stampeded by horses. Yo. There's thousands of arrows in but, the air. Brother. It's plot armor, but it was sick. It Dude, was that, sick. That, was, <laughs> that gif is so hype when he has a sort of... You're like, oh, get in there, John. But then so. his dumbass little brother couldn't zigzag away from one arrow. Uh, serpentine, brother. Uh, serpentine, uh, bro. <laughs> it's plot armor. Plot armor is is the problem here. But here's the thing: just like the Battle of the Bastards, Cody's gonna have his plot armor, and this is still gonna be great. It's still gonna be really entertaining. But we're not going Did to ever think that Cody Rhodes is in danger of losing this title because of the severe plot armor that he has. Did you think Arya killing, uh, sorry for spoilers here, Arya getting the, the Night King, was that a problem for you? It was hugely problematic for me. Dude, uh, I don't think I've ever shared this with you. No. I, there, there are two things that I'm like incredibly geeky about. Oh, no, no, yeah, 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 you have Game of Thrones. Oh, you do yeah, know, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, Game of Thrones, the world of ice and fire is like right beside wrestling. I can talk about, I can have a different podcast about the world <laughs> of ice and fire. Arya killing the Night King is stupid. It was ass. It makes no sense whatsoever <laughs> at all. What's the equivalent of WWE's version of that? <laughs> Oh, to Devaria killing the Night King? Dude, it, I think it would have been... Oh, man. I'm trying to... Th I, I, I can't think Look. of something recent because booking has actually been pretty good. Is it? Is but... it? Um, oh, I need to think on that. Let's let's let you. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to think on that because that's a good question. Just the wrong person being the one to finish the story. I, like honestly, dude, it's it's like it's been, instead of Cody at WrestleMania 40, it had a it been, was an LA Knight, LA Knight beating Roman. Sure, LA Knight, <laughs> the LA Knight beating Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. It would have been at that, Crown Jewel, where, at Crown Jewel, <laughs> where like where the where the hardcore and the people that know would have been like, what the hell? That makes no no why? But then you would have had the bum ass Arya Stark fans, LA Knight fans being like, that was amazing. Yes. But it, it wouldn't have made any sense. You're right. You're right. It would have been LA Knight. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but man, things are bad, man. Things are bad for us here. Can we take a detour real quick, LA Knight? Sure. We can uh... talk about uh, the 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 left ruins of the of the glaze factory um right now there is a still a sell here at the spirit halloween for outrageous sweaters 25 percent off because the glaze factory has become the spirit halloween actually we have a snooping season snoop on the stoop is a hood tradition you could uh, purchase now at the glaze factory and you can you know it doesn't stop there. And even though Halloween is over, we do have holiday costumes here at the Glaze Factory. And um, why do they do this? Who hates L.A. Knight? Who? Who hates Dude, him? It's the, and this will be a different topic, but we can kind of mix them. It's the transfer portal. L.A. Knight's out of there. L.A. Knight is out of, out of Friday Night SmackDown. Who hates him? Why feed him to the bloodline? Why they fed it? everyone to the bloodline yeah. oh, except Nakamura? He looks scary as hell. It's just like, oh god, oh, don't mess with that guy. <laughs> yeah, but why? Because Jacob Fatu eats poison mist for breakfast, bro. That dude would dips the poison mist in nuggies, and you're like, mm -hmm. Jacob Fatu's not afraid of poison mist. But um, just like, yeah, LA Knight lost his plot armor. That's what it is. He completely lost his plot armor. He had it kind of, sort of, making his run to the United States title, uh, especially against Logan Paul. But he doesn't have it anymore. And I think I, I want to bring it back to Cody. I feel like Cody, the plot armor is so strong, but it's because of that Rock promo. Kind of just put that plot armor on him. Because then we're like, ooh, The Rock wants it. But you could argue that The Rock saying, it doesn't matter if you have this or you don't. I want you, Cody. One, like That's the one thing that's maybe the saving grace. But I think it's as well as your booking armor. Can we have that term as well? Booking armor. What is the Let's definition what is of what booking is armor? that there's bigger, better matches for Cody Rhodes down the road to possibly lose the belt than to Kevin Owens. And that person is Randy Orton. Randy Orton taking yeah. the belt because your boy John Cena is right around the corner. So those are the booking armor that we need to get to because ultimately 
I think that WWE wants to sell us the fact that this is John Cena's last run and John Cena's last run to possibly break the record and to see him again as a, a champion. Well, they, dude, they keep calling Cody Rhodes' run the John Cena schedule. Who a better person to give it to one last time than John Cena to run the John Cena schedule? So that's the booking armor that we may be feeling, but would it be an Arya Stark situation if Kevin Owens does it? Yes. Yeah, it would be. It, it's not the right person. It'd be neat. It's interesting at the very least, but it he makes sense as the one that could beat Cody. It's the title that ruins that's what i'm saying the undisputed, the undisputed title is a problem and i and not it's not being a cody hater it's just so interesting that people have this shroud of this undisputed title that has sullied every single thing that he's done this year like no one's gonna give yeah. him his dues his flowers because he's been the undisputed champion every match that he's almost had aj versus cody rhodes is up there for match of the year but because he was the undisputed champion people don't hold it that high i i agree with you look if Arya Stark killed, if Arya Stark killed the Night King, that's one thing. But she killed the Night King and saved Westeros from the Long Night. That's winning the undisputed title. That doesn't make no sense, no sense whatsoever. I hate it. She did I it hate with it the, so she, much. She did it with a roll up too, basically. <laughs> if, if she did basically roll him up, dude. I hope that that oh, that lazy piece of crap. George R. R. Martin finishes these books soon, but because, dude, I think, I think, I think that he's, he's running the clock the out. Show, he's running the clock out, dude. <laughs> I think what happened in the show was his original plan, and he realized, oh, it was bad, and I have no other ideas, so I'm just gonna die. <laughs> oh no, he's not dead. He's, no, he's going. He doesn't have much left, bro. Let's let's just let's call a spade a spade there. But please finish the books. I would, anything. I'll I take would anything. love George R. R. Martin to be like a booker for a wrestling promotion. Oh my god, yeah, he would do some like heinous things out of nowhere, like some big for swerves like, for, for like five years. Yes, years six, seven, and eight. Don't want to see his booking. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically Vince. The Attitude Era booking was so interesting. It was so good. L.A. Knight, though you wanted, um, let, let's talk a little bit more about that and where no. that leaves the where that leaves the U.S. title picture because the Bloodline kind of clowned on it. The they Bloodline, did. Kind of, they, they did like not just like L.A. Knight, but like Andrade? pretty much the entirety. Andrade forced Nakamura to back down, even though he did kind of look cool and menacing in the process. Yeah. Uh, and you know, like it does go to show that the Bloodline didn't attack Nakamura. Maybe it's like don't fuck with that guy, don't mess with that guy. Uh, but it does it did hurt the US title picture for sure. The only way that I could see it not hurting the US title picture is if Tamatanga or uh, uh or Jacob Fatu enter the US title picture. Right? Just like how the bloodline, the blood the new bloodline was kind of always in the tag team division. They can't do that anymore. They mm. lost the infamous Tongaloa to the like so many injuries that happen at war games. Maybe instead of being part of the tag team division and the main event scene, maybe what they do is the U.S. title picture and the main event scene kind of run two divisions at the same time like they did when they were doing the tag team division and the main event scene. If that's the case, that's interesting. That Because then it does, it does to the U.S. title picture what it did for the tag team title picture, which it did elevate the tag team title picture a lot. A lot. And mm. maybe it can do that for the U.S. title picture. But right now, as it stands, I'm reaching. I have no evidence that that's what they're going to do. All I'm saying is, is maybe that's how you salvage the kind of clowning and burial of the U.S. title division. It happened when Jacob Fatu debuted. He destroyed the tag team division. And the tag team division was set back for so long, a little bit. It just delays everything. Anytime you destroy a tire division, which seemingly they did to what? To build back the bloodline? to make them more dangerous, to say that, hey, even though they lost at war games, they're still a player in the game. It didn't work for me because Andrade worked so hard to get to a certain solid place, and then he got a setback with LA Knight, stopping game seven. The only person that still looks kind of decent is Carmelo, but Carmelo is a heel, and the mid card is already lacking. And where the hell is Giovanni Vinci? I told you when Giovanni Vinci got clowned out that he's done. That's it. They had a chance. Imagine if Giovanni was running around. At least he'd be more fodder for the bloodline, and it would be okay to feed him uh, that. But to feed L.A. Knight, I'm hoping that L.A. Knight comes to Raw as a heel. 
because LA Knight could has a lot of discrepancies that he could kind of lean on, and he could be like, I'm mad at at Nick Aldis. Maybe he gives a BFT to Nick Aldis, which causes him to be transferred over to Raw to give him a heel start. I think that the, the reason why LA Knight being part of that smash, even though they kind of gave him that opportunity for a comeback spot for a little bit, it's, it's, a, it's a bummer, man. And it's a bummer because I feel that the bloodline didn't really need that. They didn't need that. And you know what SmackDown's missing? It's missing an Alpha Academy. Somebody they could just feed, just to <laughs> brutalize. Because without it, you, you only have limited options. But I still think Solo had a great promo afterwards, though. It was one of his best promos. Great promo. Great, great promo. Great promo. It was really good. And I think, like, what Solo is learning, that he could find these levels of, of hype and and I love that, uh, yeah, his voice cracked when he said Tribal Chief, but he's losing it. He's kind of spiraling out of control, and I think that that is what you need for Solo Sokoa, but it should not have been at the sacrifice of L.A. Knight. Because mm -hmm. it, we're now we're a spirit Halloween. We're a spirit Halloween. The Glaze mm -hmm. Factory. It's a sad time, you know? Very sad. It's fine. What's more sad? What's happening to L.A. Knight? or uh, your Texas Longhorns losing the SEC title game, which was worse, Sancho? Or do you want to add the bum-ass Cowboys just being the worst team in the NFC? Which one is worse, Sancho? Which one brings you more pain and agony so that we can talk about it more? Uh, Texas Longhorns losing hurt because it's like they have the answer, and it's Arch Manning. It's sitting right there. Quinn Ewers, all the respect for you. I can never be a quarterback, but brother, you are not making throws. You're not throwing downfield. We have the fastest receiver in the SEC. We got some great wideouts, a great tight end and gunner. For the love of God, put in Arch Manning. He has mobility, he has size, and he has a he has he can throw the deep ball. So or it's Texas because Dallas. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing we could do to fix that situation, brother. We are losing as the Simpsons. They homerified Dak, who's a better quarterback apparently than Dak Prescott. That happens. And then what did you ask me? Oh, L.A. Knight? Oh, he's on the transfer portal. So there's like there's, there's like a clear line of sight for L.A. Knight, so that's fine. But Texas Longhorns, brother, the answer's right there. It's Arch Manning. He's the future. Put him in for the love of God. Speaking of quarterbacks like Arch Manning, yes. uh, Jimmy Uso broke his toe. The infamous Tonga Loa tore his bicep. And uh, Bronson Reed snapped his ankle in half. I can't believe Broke WWE showed that in slow mo. Good lord, yeah. I I, per I didn't like that. I don't like seeing injuries. And the fact that 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 they like zoomed into it and like basically glorified the, how Mortal silly Kombat. putty his ankle turned. Oh, I hated it. I Mortal hated it. <sighs> what, My yeah. question to you, yes. Sancho, is uh, could this lead to the sunsetting of war games? I hope so. Or just use it for when you need to. Or just don't have people jump off the top of the cage. I mean, we see that. I know it's a great spot. We wanted it. But even Adam Copeland jumping off the top of the cage yep. resulted in the same thing. There's just so many things I feel that wrestling doesn't need to do anymore. Because we still get great like entertainment without that. I mean, Rikishi jumping off the Hell in the Cell. What was that for, right? And even Rikishi kind of felt, kind of feel like he needed to do it just to have that moment. And it's cool to have mankind getting thrown off the cage. I mean, we see a limitation of headshots these days. It just, it, it doesn't need to happen. And I feel that it is, it's one of those high risk, high rewards. The same thing with Charlotte Flair doing her moonsault to the outside. We're not going to see that anymore. Um, I just feel like war games is, should be treated like hell in a cell now. It's just like whenever a feud really needs it. And we talked about it in the last podcast. But it's, now the evidence is here, right? It's been presented. One of the things I did enjoy, though, was the sports-style presentation. Of like, hey, these guys got hurt. It is legit. These are the type of things that they do to put their bodies on the line. And I like that they treated them like, hey, they're going to be out a couple of months. We're not going to see them for a while, which makes the return of every single one viable. And that means Bronson's out of the rumble. I think Tonga Loa is out of the rumble, that's for sure, and Jimmy's out of the rumble. Maybe Jimmy can make a comeback with a broken toe, but it's a bummer, man. There's just so much talent, and who's to say the women are not banged up too? I mean, they kind of have their their little hit ribs and things of that sort. But even the women's division, they they could have suffered so much so much injury, especially with that moonsault off the trash can. Like, <laughs> jeez, so yeah, much the, crazy it, spots. It, it, it would have been like I would have been like angry. Uh, if there were injuries in the women's side, because I felt like this didn't even need to be in war games in mm -hmm. the first place, right? Like if it didn't warrant being in a dangerous match, let's not put them in a dangerous environment. I did feel like bloodline versus versus bloodline and CM Punk 
that was a feud that warranted war games. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like some of those spots, I bet you that they won't be doing those again. Uh, cause you know, like losing those three guys, those are three like important narrative pieces to what they were doing on raw and SmackDown like that. Those are really, really big losses. They're just lucky that it wasn't punk. They're lucky that it wasn't Roman. They're lucky that it wasn't like their biggest, most important players. Uh, cause then they would have been really, really screwed. I'm kind of with you, man. They should just do the hell in a cell thing where it's like, if it warrants it, do it. If it doesn't warrant it, like we could just have a match, dude. Like we don't have to kill ourselves and put ourselves in a in a car crash situation just because the calendar says a particular month i'm with you on that but to sunset war games in general we could i'd say we can sunset the the yearly release the assassin's creedification madden of the con, war games the con yeah we can we don't yeah, we don't have to do Call of Duty like yearly releases every November. It, that actually works because COD's every November like War Games. We don't have to do that. We could just do it when when it warrants it. Uh, Ancho. Yes. We already we you already kind of talked about it at the beginning when we were talking about uh, the new day, the DIY heel turn. Mm. I called this oh, yeah? so well, dude. I made a video uh, about a week before. Uh, I, I do this monthly video series in case you you, you don't watch the YouTube videos where Me I talk too. about who is going to dethrone every single current active champion in the WWE. It's a monthly series that I do at the start of every single month. And I wish I could play the clip for you, Sancho. I said that the that Motor City Machine Guns, Raging Piss, will be dethroned by DIY because DIY will turn heel and Johnny Gargano will play the wolf in sheep's clothing as he's befriending the Motor City Machine Guns and he's going to use that closeness with the Motor City Machine Guns to turn heel on them and help DIY win the tag titles. And I said it because we've never seen a proper heel DIY, but we've seen Gargano versus Ciampa so much already. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they do revisit that. That's one of Triple H's greatest hits. But we didn't need it right now. Mm. And we also did not need a tag team splitting up on SmackDown. No. Because of the injury of Tongaloa, that removes the bloodline from the tag team division, as we've already spoken about. That leaves a major power vacuum as the like who's the top heel tag team on SmackDown? Can't really okay. be A Town Down Under. They're nowhere to be found. The they can't be pretty deadly. So somebody had to step up. I don't think that DIY is on the level of the bloodline by any means. But the heel turn had definitely helped elevate them as the top heel team on SmackDown. Time out. Do we really think Tongalo is hurt? Like, do you think that he's hurt? Okay, so it's so funny because all of the 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 replays that they show, it's like, yeah, Jimmy went toe right. first. Yeah, yeah, dude, Bronson Reed snapped his ankle in half, and then they're like, and then Tongala, he's just getting beat with the toolbox that's what and I'm that saying. somehow tore his that, bicep that's there. what i'm saying dude because you know who's around the corner i don't think the bloodline are out dude hikaleo dude he could be the one that filled okay. in because he said i mean solo sequoia is like just because i lost two soldiers doesn't mean i'm out i'm not done i'm still here i think this is a great way to introduce another member of the bloodline to substitute and what a better person to put on the bench than Tongaloa for a little bit and have him run with Tamatanga, dude. Like, they would work really well together. And I, it's it's so odd to me that it's, it's not buyer's remorse because I think Tongaloa does have value. But it kind of feels that way if they bench them. Does he? Does he? <laughs> like, I think they'd be fine if it was Tamatanga, Solo Sokoa, and Jacob Fatu. I feel with like... Hikaleo, that would be good. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm purely talking about Tongaloa. I, uh... I don't think... I don't think that he necessarily added much to their overall presentation. He didn't remove anything, you know? It's like he's just, that, he's a rotational player. But that's my that's my only like, mm, are we sure because CM Punk really worked that arm, you know what I mean? With the toolbox. He really laid into Tongaloa. And it wasn't like to necessarily take out Tongaloa. I think it was just to set up this situation that there's someone gone. I don't think they expected to, to lose Bronson Reed and and other people, but I'm just interested because they already kind of did this Jacob Fatu hurt his knee, they're nerfing type of thing. But I don't know, man. I feel like the bloodline is has to get more soldiers into the They're into they're, the they're going to nerf Tongaloa. He's just too powerful. He's just going to come he out kinda, now, he just one looked, eye, one arm. He looked he just looked too clean in that bicep thing. And I and I know, dude, this is wrestling and it could be true, but 
sometimes when they mix in like real stuff with like a work, you kind of got to go, like, hmm, something doesn't. But here's the thing. Something we we here. we thought the AJ Styles thing was a was a work because they showed, <sighs> like they 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 did kind of like the traditional wrestling angle of it. Right. But then it ended up being real. So it, I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore, man. But what I do know is Gargano's a heel. And Gargano with... I think this is fun for Gargano because it allows him to exercise new muscles that he hasn't exercised in a while. And it's funny that him, Candice LeRae, are both heels. And they both love bluey characters and Bandit and Chili. Do you understand how bad it is to love bluey characters and yet be heels? Do you feel this anger that's coming out of me right now as someone that avidly watches Bluey? Do you know what Bluey is, sir? It's one of the is best it? Australian cartoons that's taken over the world on Disney+. Plus. Do you understand the love that I have for Bandit Chili, Bluey, and Bingo? And they're the most beloved characters and the, by far has instantly shot up to the number one cartoon of all time that teaches kids how to be great, great children. At the same time, teaches parents to always great children. To always, always <laughs> in cherish these moments because once these kids grow up, they're gone, brother. And to have Gargano, who wore Bandit trunks, to have a uh, good old Candice Array, who wore chili trunks be bad guys in the wwe breaks my heart sir breaks my heart is is this your Arya stark killing the night oh King? absolutely <laughs> did, did, to spend eight minutes watching a bluey episode on disney plus not sponsored and you would realize how sad it is to see this happen this travesty i feel like stephen a smith you know how he's like this is outrageous this is a travesty and beyond mm, so what did you think of the heel turn though did you I like, like it? it. Did I like it. I liked like it. it. I liked it because it, it was needed. Uh, the SmackDown mm -hmm. tag team division needed a little shakeup, and Motor City Machine Guns need their Joker. They need their rival because Motor City Machine Guns. I said this before on the on my SmackDown reviews because I'm the one who does the reviews, the A show, of the Patreon. I said they are very vanilla. These guys are very vanilla. They're good in the ring. They're fun to watch. They're clean in the ring. But boy, they have that baby face kind of attitude when it comes to their promos. Yeah, we'll have that match. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah, yeah. we'll give you that match. No problem. And I get it, dude. That's where their wheelhouse is. And I and I clocked them, right? I was like, okay, these are these guys. These are the baby face, super baby face guys. That, 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 if they have an edge, you're going to be like, all right, Motor City, you're silly. So if they could get a different gear out of Motor City with this DIY portrayal, I'm all for it because I do think Motor City needs a little bit of an edge beyond their really good tag team that we haven't had in the WWE forever. I think that you gotta add some, some you gotta add some sprinkles to that vanilla, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of the crushings, a little bit of that Oreo. I'm with you, okay. I'm with you. Okay. I'm excited for the, for the DIY heel run. I hope that Candace is a part of this, I feel like. Yeah. That'd be more interesting. Transfer uh, portal. I, yeah, th yeah, very true. Uh, this is where I wish they hadn't have pulled the trigger so quickly on Indy Hartwell either. I, I feel know. like Indy, the Indy, it felt wrong. Indy not being there as part of the celebration of DIY. Could she come back? LeRae. You never know. I mean, anything is possible. Anything, literally anything is possible. So you, you never know. She's, she's so young. She's still in her twenties. She has so much left to her career uh, that I'm sure WWE has to it like recognize that there's value there in terms of how much time she still has to grow mm -hmm. i felt like that was a a a rash decision to release indy hartwell uh me personally mm. uh so let's let's talk about that transfer portal dude can i say something about this i don't i, I don't is think that this, this is, is a hot take i think it's a safe place I, I, I think once i explain it people will agree okay. uh ditch the freaking draft and just do the transfer portal we don't need a draft the transfer portal is so much more interesting you know how annoying it is to tune in to the WWE draft only for the first eight picks to be guys that are getting picked to go to the show they were already a part of? Great. Thanks for telling me that Seth Rollins is going to Monday Night Raw when he's been on Monday Night Raw for the past four freaking years. It, to me, that is such a, such a way to fluff the draft that it's frustrating. I much prefer you know, like when they used to do the draft... Yes, Fluff? I much prefer. Yes, 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 Sancho. What, what, what's that mean? Tell the world. No. Tell I, us all. I play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> With the draft portal, and, and just like how they used to do in the earlier versions of the of the draft. With this new trade portal, the only people that will be announced, the only people that will get talked about are the people actually switching shows. Mm. The ones that will 
actually have a change on WWE narrative. I think that that is such a much better, more exciting system than what they're doing in the current age of everybody's eligible to be selected, but you want to protect your best assets. Like, no, no, no. You're you're trying too hard to be realistic with and trying to make it too much of a sport because I get it. If mm. you're a manager of a sports team, you're going to try to protect your quarterback, your running back, your offensive line, but that doesn't make for interesting TV that you're keeping the same characters that you already had. With this trade portal, the only ones that will be talked about, at least I presume, are the ones that will actually switch shows, and that is significantly much better in my opinion. So we're we talking about LA Knight, right? It has to be. Has to be. Sure. Why take the belt off of him? Because I, I got a little worried. When Nakamura came out and LA Knight's music kick, I was like, oh, no. Please, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let's all move on from this and put him into the Raw. Because him cutting promos with Gunther is so exciting. And it will be a benefit for everybody. It will give Gunther a new kind of opponent to go after. And, yes, I kind of tease, like, if LA Knight's a, f a heel, that wouldn't happen. But still, it's another player in the game that LA Knight could, uh, and Triple H could have fun with. Who else would you see transferred over, um, even from Raw and SmackDown, anyone else? I, I do see Dominic Mysterio stealing the Judgment Day away from Finn Balor and the Judgment Day going to Friday Night SmackDown. They need a change of scenery, and they need it bad. I, I, I I'm... I'm tired of the Judgment Day, and that's not a good thing. Uh -huh. And I think part of the reason why I'm tired of the Judgment Day is because we haven't seen them feud with anybody aside from, like, the same rotation of people over the mm. last, like, two and a half years. If we bring them to SmackDown, brand new, uh, brand new faces that we haven't seen them feud with in a while, I feel like that could be a jolt of energy, yeah. especially if this is a Judgment Day that is now led by a Dominic Mysterio. Uh, so he was I, talking I to Nick Aldis. To see that. He was talking to Nick Aldis on SmackDown. Exactly right. Um, I would like to see that change. I wouldn't hate also seeing perhaps new bloodline going over to Monday Night Raw. I feel like to a degree they're also suffering from the same thing of the Judgment Day, where it's like a lack of of viable people that they haven't already feuded with. Right? Mm -hmm. It's Randy, Kevin Owens, Cody Rhodes. Roman Reigns, they've done it. They've they've ran the gambit with them already. Mm -hmm. Let's go somewhere else. Let let's let's go test the waters and see what it's like to to go feud with uh with Seth Rollins specifically. Let's mm. see what it's like to go feud with uh with with just Jey Uso. Just a Jey Uso feud with them would be interesting, right? There's already bloodline pieces over on Monday Night Raw plus new faces on Monday Night Raw for Solo Sokoa and the new Bloodline. I I, I personally would would like to see that change of scenery for them. Ludwig Kaiser should go to SmackDown and go after the United States title. I know Nakamura's currently holding it, but Kaiser would be a great heel to have on SmackDown. Get him a little bit separated, which would further the storyline of Gunther releasing his Pokemon into the wild and let him go <laughs> let him go into SmackDown. I think that would be a great person because I feel like what the end road for him if he stayed would be to be the IC title holder, which I don't see because I think Sheamus would take over. So unless to keep Ludwig there, he, uh, Ludwig there, he would be a foe for Sheamus when he is the IC title holder eventually, if that happens. But I don't know. I think Kaiser and SmackDown would be interesting because he is such a different kind of vibe that they have anyone else in SmackDown. Because currently the heels are what? The Austin Theory, Grayson Waller, uh, uh, Santos Escobar, and the, the Phasma. But I think Kaiser would be a great addition over there. I. I, I mean, I'm fine with that, right? Like, that works for me as well in, Would in Carmelo, various different levels. Carmelo going to Raw be interesting? Sure, sure. Why not? Uh, well, I mean, we've, we we can talk about those mid-carders as well because we saw uh, what happened when you uh, even just brought the idea of bringing over Chad Gable, right? Brand Ooh. new matchup for him. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. seen Cody versus Chad before as a match, but as a feud, we've never seen that before. That's intriguing, mm. right? I'd be down for that if I'm willing to accept AJ Styles versus Cody Rhodes is a feud where I know AJ Styles isn't going to win the feud. I'm willing to accept and enjoy a feud between Cody Rhodes and American Maid, even though I know that Cody Rhodes wouldn't lose the title to them. I'm down for that. It just creates so many interesting scenarios for guys that are just sort of treading water on their respective shows. Hear me out, Santi's is a safe place. Yeah, of course it is. Yes. So imagine... Cody's like, hey, I, I, you know, he's running, uh, trying to figure out who's going to be champion, and it is American-made music hits again. And what if it's at a PLE, 
and Chad comes out with a shaved head, you would go, oh, my God. I go nuts. I you go would nuts. say, oh, Cody, you're in trouble, brother. <laughs> and he comes with a black, a black mouthpiece. Oh, oh my God. Yo. I, yeah, you're cooked, brother. You're done. <laughs> yeah, it's you're over. Done, dude. It'd be just like when Nakamura came out with his samurai gear. I was like, oh, LA Knight, you're done, brother. This guy's looking cool. So that would be the that would be the anti-plot armor. It's like doomsday all of a sudden showing up. But yeah, I, I wonder, I'm trying to think about the women's division. I think uh, Alba Fire could do, do a new change of scenery. Sure, um, Bailey. Bailey. I'm done with Bailey on SmackDown. You, she's yeah. done it all over there. Let's get yeah, a new yeah. scene. Get over there. Um, I think Rhea definitely stays on Raw. That's that's duh. Any main eventer switching. You mentioned the bloodline, but any other main eventer switching as well. Maybe Randy could go over um, to give him a new taste of scenery because he's been written off TV for a little bit. Uh, maybe I could see I could see that happening. I could see Kevin Owens actually instead of Randy because Kevin mm -hmm. Owens already kind of called his inevitable shot against the Jey Usos and the Sami Zayn's of the yeah. world, and yeah. they're over on Raw. So I could see that happening as a main eventer. Tiffany Stratton, I could see her taking that briefcase over to Monday Night Raw as well to help rejuvenate the women's division as a whole because that's what raw needs right now you look at the smackdown women's division it is so unfairly stacked when you compare it to monday night raw mm. it's not even funny so let's bring over a tiffany stratton some new blood uh to to help rejuvenate the frankly struggling women's division of yeah. monday night raw i did like when uh tiffany stratton was like hey Liv, if i cash it on you does dominic come with me mm, <laughs> the forbidden fruit and tom just goes no no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, at first he smiled. Yeah, I know. And then yeah, he's, he's like, like, wait, wait, no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> no. That's not me. I do feel like Carl. I, I feel like Carlito needs to change the pace. I feel where I run thin on the Judgment Day is the moment that all of them are attacking Damian Priest. Magically, Damian Priest could just defeat them all, and it's just so frustrating to watch as someone who knows who's like re re kind of like watching Carlito's matches when he was at his prime, I would say, in the WWE. I'm like, man, this dude deserves a run. And you you hyped him up for me when he came I back. You're like, bro, he's a great addition. He's going to be a great heel when he turns finally heel on LWO. And just hasn't delivered at all what we could – we all know what Carlito has. And, and I think it started when he added a new Def Rebel theme. I was like, no, no. He doesn't Do even you spit. Know what cool is? Do, do, do. Shut up. Shut he, up. He doesn't, even spit. he doesn't even spit apples in anyone's face anymore. When's the last time you've seen him do that? Hmm? Oh, dude, honestly, I, I I think it might have been Backlash Puerto Rico. Yes. I, like, I, I I genuinely can't think of a, of a time that he spit in somebody's face because they weren't cool. That's true. I, 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 dude, that's that's a, that's a fight, bro. If you spit in my face, I'm sorry. That's, it's going yeah. down. It's going down. What if I spit in your face? Can we just move on? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's move on. I, I have something Santi to say about the women's division. Santi, out of context, you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> let's, I wanted to talk about the Women's Intercontinental Championship picture. I just want to pull up the tournament bracket here for a second because I, I got a problem with this. But again, it kind of goes to show with um, how poor the women's division is on Monday Night Raw. So when I pull up the, the tournament bracket, a couple of the matches have already happened. But like when you compare the women that are in this versus the women that are in the United States championship bracket, let me pull that up as well. U S title bracket. Go ahead. Pull yeah, it up. Yeah. Dude. Don't stop. Here. Yeah, so I've got, I've got both of these up here. The star power like is, is so unfair. Like when I list, listen, listen to some of the names that I can, that I can list off on the SmackDown one, right? Okay. Bailey first ballot hall of famer, Candice LeRae, at this like single star right and separated away from from indy harwell that's a proper single star bfab an unknown that mm -hmm. was interesting all mm -hmm. right okay mm -hmm. i'm interested to see what they got with bfab bianca belair first ballot hall of famer chelsea green a favor that everybody wants to see win blair davenport not featured but single star proper single from star. nxc yeah, yeah yeah jade jade cargill massive like superstar mm. Meechin, somebody that has grown tremendously as a single star mm -hmm. hyper nevin another one of those that at any moment is a major single sleeper, star like sleeper, they did yeah. a sleeper like they yeah, did a yeah, clash yeah. at the castle naomi a former women's champion across multiple organizations tiffany stratton the future of the women's division and your electra lopez all right we, we ignore electra lopez but that is a stacked stacked division 
Look mm. at what we've got over on the Intercontinental Championship picture, and I'm going to break everyone down, and and, and I am going to be kind of negative, okay? Dakota Kai, I know a lot of people want to see her go deep, has not been featured at all as a single star in two years, literally just came back, was given a vignette, and we're supposed to believe that's a proper single star. It's mm. not, not yet. Mm. Shayna Baszler has not been featured as a single star for like a year, has been a her tag underground match was good. Her underground match with GCW was that is, solid. That, in GCW, okay, yeah, I thought yeah, you were yeah. going to say the one in, no, no, in no, NXT. No, 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 GCW. Sure. Purely talking WWE canon, has not been featured at all as a single star in the past year. Katana right. Chance, never been a single star in the WWE main roster at all. Zoe Stark has not been featured as a single star whatsoever over the past year. Um... Raquel Rodriguez, legit entry. I'm cool with that. Caden Carter, never been fe never been featured as a single star mm. ever on the main roster. Lyra Valkyria, legit entry, but disappeared and not been featured for months. Why? Mm. Zelina Vega, not been featured as a single star. Been a background character for the LWO. Ivy Nile, legit entry. Alba Fire, not ever been featured as a single star on the main roster. Kyrie Sane has not been featured as a single star on the main roster since coming back to the WWE. And mm. Natalia never appears on TV. That is a terrible tournament bracket <laughs> when you compare it to what I just mentioned on SmackDown. It is it, the problem here, Sancho, is, is that these women are very talented, but they have not been booked as if they are actual threats to be a singles woman star. And yeah. they're almost relying which is the opposite of what's going on on SmackDown. On SmackDown, they are relying on the star power of the women to elevate that U.S. championship. Here, they're relying on the existence of the Intercontinental Championship to raise the mid-card. That's a problem. That's mm. not how it should be. It should be the other way around. You're saying so, a belt does not... Rant. You're saying the belt does not make the wrestler. The wrestler makes the belt. Absolutely. And when you look at the tournament on SmackDown, it's very clear that that is the case. Whoever wins that will elevate that belt. Whoever wins this, the belt needs to elevate them. What if it's Natalia? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, I don't think <laughs> Natalia wins. I, I, I think it is going I think it's gonna be Lyra Valkyria. You I hear my fantasy booking? Okay, I'll, I'm in tinfoil or right. just hear me out. A little bit, little bit of, okay. uh, of hear me out, a little bit of tinfoil. I love it. I think, I think that it's going to be Dakota Kai versus Raquel Rodriguez in one of the semifinals, and we've already seen Dakota Kai go up against Liv Morgan, get attacked by PFC. So we we know that there's shenanigans afoot. I think that PFC and Liv Morgan are going to help Raquel Rodriguez beat Dakota Kai. I really think that okay. that Raquel Rodriguez is going to be in the final. And I think the final is going to be Raquel Rodriguez versus Lyra Valkyria. And you know what I think is going to happen? I think that Liv Morgan is going to go out there to try and help uh, Raquel Rodriguez. And then music hits. The man Becky Lynch comes out and helps country woman Lyra Valkyria fend off Liv Morgan to help Lyra Valkyria have a proper one-on-one -on -one with Raquel Rodriguez to win the Women's Intercontinental Championship. They didn't have a chance to properly pay off the friendship and partnership between Lyra and Becky Lynch. This could be a way to bring back Becky Lynch, but also um, put the cherry on top of that storyline that they weren't able to properly develop and finish before Becky Lynch left the WWE. It brings us back to Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan, something that kind of turned into a one-off match because Becky Lynch left pretty much right after she lost the title to Liv Morgan. So and it brings Becky Lynch right back into the fold of everything that's going on, which allows Liv Morgan to go off in a feud with Becky Lynch, and it opens up Rhea Ripley and Liv, uh, Rhea Ripley and Io Sky to have a proper feud by themselves. And let me throw down the cherry on top. Becky Lynch said in an interview, "I would not go out with Dominic Mysterio slamming the door in my face." And who is Liv with? Dom. There you go. Oh, so you you don't hate the fantasy book? No, I don't. You're so good. I hate All that right. you're so good. Are you an insider? Some people say. Some people say that I'm also an outsider, and that's what makes me an insider. Oh. I'm so out I'm in, baby. <laughs> Ooh. I like that. I, I think the IC title needs that. It definitely does. And I think it does also, and I, and I predicted that it'd be fun, and clearly it's not going to happen. A Jordan Grace would be a great first opponent for the IC title to continue to grow that legacy and not necessarily give Jordan Grace the title right off the rip, but have her chase that title for a while. Um, I would like to see Raquel. The only reason why I would, I would, if I were to push back on it, is that if Raquel had the belt, it would add more to the heel group of 
Liv and Raquel um, Rakizel. I think that'd be interesting to have. But if Becky Lynch is the end goal of the GPS for Triple H, I like that. I'm all okay. In. All right. I'm all in. My hear me out worked. He opened his ears and he listened. I'm always open. Gentlemen. I ask if it's a safe place and I say always and you say never. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. That's true. I'm trying to become more open. This time you asked and I said, yeah, it's safe. Yeah, you are. I, I think we're in. But then, but then sometimes you come up with bum ass no, things. No, no. Well, just like, yeah, listen, listen. Like, like Lana managing Gunther. Do you know how many people hated that? Dude, the amount of people that hated you saying I think that might be the, the thing that's gotten the most Sancho hate aside from you calling Five Nights at Freddy's FNAF. It's FNAF. FNAF sounds great, though. It sounds awful. Where is FNAF? How, how does it? FNAF, FNAF. There's well, no difference here. No. It's a, no, it's a, because if you're willing to say FNAF, then you have to say F-N-A-F. -F. If you're willing to separate one of the letters, then you have to separate all of it's them. Like, if it's you're going like, to do a proper acronym and say it, you need to say the whole thing. Listen, it's like the 12 days of Christmas. You hit that five golden ring, five nights at Freddy's, FNAF. Sancho, how do you say the – how do you say NASA? NASA. I'm from okay, Texas. I'm glad it's not N NASA. <laughs> I hate you. Uh, That's you. An ass. -a. You, you An remind, ass. <laughs> you remind me of my daughter and my son. They 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 mock each other by going, yeah, yeah, That's you. That's you. <laughs> You're my puppy. <laughs> Papa. Papa. Um, so, folks, we were planning on doing a shorter episode this week because we're going to do a second episode mm -hmm. of uh, my, my our voice. Saturday night's main event. Mm -hmm. and, and Sancho's a little bitch. Oh. <laughs> Seth Rollins, oh, he didn't write back to me. That's you right now with your voice, little bitch, little, little bitch vocal Dog, cords. Remember you your little bitch wrist incident? Little yeah, bitch boy wrist? You got was, a little bitch boy was, vocal cords. I was doing hip thrusters with a 30-pound dumbbell, and and then I got it off of me, and it twisted my wrist, and I was like, oh, Ow. I think I'm hurt. <laughs> I think I'm hurt. And now I switched have you, have to... You, Yes. I was gonna say, have you seen that baby cow that's gone viral on TikTok? And the there's way a baby it moves, cow it's now. Yeah, it like it moved for the first time and it went moo. Really? It like it sounded so sassy. Moo. <laughs> I'm still the baby hippo. Was it moo dang? Oh, you're. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 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 behind. You're behind. <laughs> I'm Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thank you. So oh no, wait. New new heat order before we we we. Yeah, wrap up. new new heat order. Let's get to that. Let's get to that. Hey, are we on board of of calling it the new new day? Right. No. The no. It's, oh, oh, the new new day. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I thought you day. wanted to change the name of the new new heat order. No, 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 no. The new new. new, new yeah, yeah, we're we're on board. We're on board. All right, folks. If you're new to the show, this is the new new heat order. Uh, we determine who is the hotness, who is coming in hot into the next show, the next week, and the next BLE. Not necessarily the best wrestlers, but the new new heat order is is it is it is said, it is written. Uh, at number one is Big E. Number two, Kofi. Number three, Xavier. Number four, Seth Rollins. Number five, CM Punk. Number six, Drew Mack. Number seven, Roman Reigns. Number eight is Nakamura. Number nine, Jay Uso. And number ten, Big Bronson Reed. Bronson Wright. I wish he had a voice like that. Bronson Wright. Um, who's number one? You, you wanted to have that Jason Statham voice? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Jason Statham. <laughs> I, I don't do jobs anymore. I don't do jobs. But what's the job? <laughs> That's every, every Jason Statham movie. No, number one, New New Day. 100%. Right? Yep. Not changing. Not one changing. and two. I've just put them together. New New Day. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, New New Day. Because they're, they're not at different sides now. They're together. Um, number two would be a quite interesting. Dude, yeah, they're not it's as active? they're not that high for me. They're, it's interesting, but I gotta say, even though CM Punk and Seth Rollins had a misstep, I think they're up there, right? They have to be a little sure. bit up there. Um, I mean, we still have. Let me give you some names: Seth Rollins, CM Punk, Drew Mack, Roman Reigns, Nakamura, Jey Uso, Bronson Reed. I think if Drew Mack was in the ring, he would have a higher place. But he had just had a vignette, which was kind of a solid vignette. Yeah, but he attacks uh, Sami Zayn. They have a match at oh, Saturday night's main event. I can't, yeah, that's true. That's true. Do mm, you want to put Drew? Or do you want to put someone else higher? I mean, Kevin Dude, Owens. Dude, I have DIY over all of them this really? week. Really? I do. Oh. I really do. Just this Just this week. Okay. Okay. Uh, give, how me about, give me how that about, one. Give me that one. I'll give you that. How about New Bloodline at three? The destroy, yeah. destroy mid-card. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dude, you... look at these tag teams and factions. Yeah, tag teams and factions are moving up. Any love for PFC and what they're doing with damage control? I mean, that was a kind of an angle that happened. Any love? Did you just ask me any love for PFC? Yeah. You could easily In just... no world ever will there be love for PFC, Pancho. <laughs> Never. Love. Dog, if Zoe Starks, Shayna Baszler, or uh, Sonya Deville was sitting across from you, what would you say? I will, I will say you're great, you're amazing, I love what you do. <laughs> and if you heard anything negative that I've said about you, didn't mean nothing by it, my bad. Out of, out of context, out of context. It was, you should... <laughs> okay. Uh, All of them could beat the crap out of me. Number four, any love for Lyra advancing? Any love for the IC going through? I mean, those are... Uh, the thing for me is I don't enjoy the triple threat as being a qualifier because they're rough quality matches. I prefer sure. if it was a singles match because I think we would have got banger matches if it was singles. I think from the women's, I'm more interested in EO, right? She had that moment oh, where yeah. she's grabbing the title with, with Rhea. Yeah. Uh, kind of like signaling. It, it was another one of those Triple H flexes, right? Like, yeah. what, what we have. Yeah, yeah. And EO looked great. She looked great with that missile drop kick. And it, it seemingly so, becoming a star of the Wrestling School Match Club. Everyone Dude, loved people Every love time matches. we have a match of EO Sky. Dude, instantly. EO Penta, that was wild. Oh, it was so that good. That was wild. Dude, the parts where EO was getting thrown into the chairs, and then she does the same thing to Penta. Ooh. So good. It's good so ending, good. too. Good ending to that match. Uh, number five. Is this where you want to put Seth Rollins and CM Punk? Yeah, I think this is where we can do Seth Rollins, CM Punk. And then, I'm honestly, right CM after Punk. them, yeah. can... can can I put Kevin Owens over both of them, actually? That Kevin Owens carpool karaoke interview was hilarious. Get out of my rental vehicle right now. Get out uh, of my rental vehicle right now, Michael Cole. And then he, hey, Michael. And then <laughs> rolls up the window on him. <laughs> Come on. That was good. That was good. That was good. I'm going to put CM Punk over Rollins because Rollins failed at his mission. Mission failed. Mission failed. Back to the one. Anyway. I've been playing a lot of Marvel Rivals. That game's really good. Mm, dude, way. I hear it's taken Overwatch's lunch money. It, dude, it totally did. It, it remind you know what it reminds me of? AEW when it first showed up. Ooh. Same, same but different. You're like, wait a minute, this is so. Hopefully, Marvel Rivals doesn't mess up because that's the all they do updates, balance patches. I feel like devs kind of they kind of look at the numbers and like, oh, we're losing. Just keep it as is because right now it's gold, dude. It's just solid. Uh, number eight, Nakamura. 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 Yeah. Maybe uh, yeah. Dirty Dom. You know, maybe Finn Balor. No, Finn, I, any love for Finn Balor, sir? Any love for none. Finn Balor? What? I have none. Well, I have none. It's well, not doing it for me, brother. That feud is, is not working for me at no all. No love for Damien for standing tall? None. Wow. 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 Okay, then uh, no. we have Roman, we have Drew Mack, we have Jay Uso, and we have Bronson Reed. And those are the ones that were left from the previous, and of course, Biggie's out, so. <clears throat> mm, trying to think here. Any love for Tiffany winning her triple threat match? That match wasn't that great, though. That's what I mean. I agree. Uh, Rhea? Any love for Rhea? Yeah, I, I have more right. love for Rhea than I do okay. what's going on with uh, Finn, Damien, and, and Gunta. I feel like uh, Rhea Ripley looked great in that match. And the thing about it is it was cool to see anything goes. It kind of felt different to see the women going out sure. in the crowd, right? Kind of a little felt a little. Sure, hard. I agree. Any love for Liv Morgan, sir? I do. I think okay. Liv Morgan should be on this list, too. Yeah, let's put Liv Morgan on there. Okay, we have Great one... match with Dakota Kai. Good angle there to end the show. We have one spot left for the new new heel. Or here's the update for the people like we can't keep up with it. Again, very expensive graphics. Very okay. All right. Number ten. We could Sammy put Zane. Your... Dude, he's he's getting back to the high horse for a second. I there. know, dude. You're better than that, Seth. You're better than that. Okay, put Drew McIntyre here. All right. All right. With peace and love, Sammy. You kind of you kind of dipped into this, and again, I think there's multiple times the WWE is guilty of this. They do te they do testing grounds. Yes, Drew McIntyre or Chad Gable. I'm leaning towards Chad because this was such a big catapult up for Chad, and not a really big but, move needle mover week for Drew. But he didn't come out. Okay, here's my thing. Two things quickly. Piper Nevin and Bianca Belair, right? 
I, I great feel match. great match. And I feel that when we talked about the nerfing of Triple H uh, with his baby faces, this was a great opportunity to make Piper look strong. I wish Piper was the reason why Bianca hurt her ribs. Like, give her that power. Give the heel the reason why they are having issues. Give Piper working that rib, not because it's a vulnerable spot. Make Piper the one that's the cause of that. Same thing here with Chad and Cody. I wish it was Chad that stomped on this foot. I wish it was Chad that went in there and did the damage versus Kevin Owens coming in and doing the thing because I understand they needed Kevin Owens to pull the trigger, something he didn't refuse to do. But that's my thing. I feel like Kevin Owens coming in, doing the dirty work, kind of took Chad's opportunity to be that heel. Okay. I mean, I, uh, okay, let's put Drew then. I, I'm, I'm not married to it having to be Chad. No, I, I feel like with you, Drew— You gave me DIY. You gave me DIY. Yeah, I gave you DIY, but I feel like the reason why I like Drew Mack is because, like, dude, he's, he's coming after everybody. He's, I, he, I'm, he, I'm good with that. He feels like the WWE Punisher. Ooh, Frank Castle. Mm. 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 Frank oh, here. Clash at the castle. Here's the new Here's the new new heat order. The new new day DIY. The I don't know what's happening to Sandy. Uh the new uh bloodline, EO Sky, uh Kevin Owens, CM Punk. Seth Rollins, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, and Drew Mack. I could have put Nakamura at 10. I feel like it's like 10 soft today. You know? Yeah, it's a, it was a soft one. Yeah, it's a soft one. Uh, so, folks, there is going to be a bonus episode here of the Wrestling is Cool podcast. Why this one was a little bit shorter. We're going to do our Saturday night's main event predictions because out of nowhere, this two-hour TV show with commercials has five matches, and we're going to be talking about all of them. Mm. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Wrestling is Cool podcast. Again, you could have listened to this episode three days earlier than everywhere else on the planet over on Patreon.com slash Santi Zap. And not only... Could you be getting all this stuff early? You could be uh, one of our producers here, mm -hmm. like many of the people that pledge at the $15 tier who are the producers of this show. So an extra special thank you goes out to Sancho Mania Running Wild, F.U. Santi, I'm first, Nick Harvey, 2022 Benjamin, Aaron Garcia, uh, Aki is gone or Akai is gone, Alejandro, Alex Rigel, Alex, Alan Crockett, Anita Maxwin. Uh, geez, man, I need to make this bigger. I got no eyes. There we go. That's so much better. Uh, Anita Max win. Anthony uh, Ariyoshi, Ashley Raynal, Sperlitz, Ozzy Kingslayer, Austin Baker, Austin Gregory, Austin Theories Theorist, RIP MatPad, Authentic Chocolate, <laughs> Bailey Fuller, Bailey Saunders, Batsy, Ben Calloway, Ben Farton, Barry, B Hostel, Big Poppy Sasquatch. Are you really laughing at Ben Farton? Really? Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Big Shy, Blast Pass, Blue Bot, Blue Fish, Bob Thiessen, Brady Keaton, Brandon, Brian Ibarra, Bry Guy, Bryce Bird, <sighs> Bunker Jonesy Loves WWE, Caleb Lee, Callus Kavon, Callum Smart, Cameron Dodd, Cameron Noel, Captain Geek, uh, and the Shrimp Shack Shooters. Oh, dude, that's a great Carlos reference to um, The Wonders. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that, that, that thing you do, that thing you do, you never seen it, Tom Hanks? Nope. Oh, you need to watch that. Look, look, please watch that movie with with your significant one. Doubt it. Uh, Carlos Gonzalez, uh, CB, change my name because Santi can't say Dutch words. Cheese balls rules. <laughs> Chew poppy. Chimchar collectibles. Chris Harris, Christian, Christian Billick, Christian G, Christian Ormsby, Christopher Butner, Lucas, CM Puff, Colin Roach, Connor Williamson. Daniel Who, Dar, uh, Dark Flame, Detroit Made Benjamin, DJ Broadnax, Dorian Best, Drew Baumgarten, ba uh, Dumsky, Dyer Hellfire, Dylan, Dylan Kana, El Jochi, uh, Emmanuel Holmes, Eric uh, Buelna, uh, Aaron, I can't read today, bro. Aaron Thorne, Isatch, Mike Oxsmall, that God, you're an idiot. Um, Fletcher Walpole. Floating Forever Wrestling, Franklin L. Everett, Gabe Mares, Gamerscape, George Valdez, Gilbert Deans, Goofy Goober, DXA Man, Heartfelt, uh, Hoodie Cam, I Miss Jerry Show, Issa David, It's Mista, wow. Jack, Jack Baker, Jack Ghibli, Jackson, Jacob Pena, Jacob Staffel, Jaden, Jada, uh, Jacob Chavoya, no, just Jake Chavoya, uh, James Brian Belago. Jason the uh, Jason the Sella, Jason Alcazar, Javier Rodriguez, J Jalen Steele, Jeremiah, Jesse Gibbons, Jesse, Jahihi, Ahihi, uh, Joe Velez, Joey, 
Joey Rovig, Dolly Green Giant, Jordan Lynch, uh, uh, Jordan Marte, Jaws B, Jess, uh, Jose Santi's cousin, Joseph Pointer, Josh Sutton, JR, Juan Verdusco, Judson Daniels, lots of J's, dude. Juicy, Justin Perkins, Caden Rivers, Caden Burgess, Ken Dean, Kisuz, Kuwaiti Rick Boogs, Kyrie Lawrence, Lo Shifu, Luke Parker, Luke Sika, Manly Man, Manny IDK, Marnie YCSM, Matthew Dollar, 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 Dollar is all I need, Matthew, uh, Matthew Watkins, Max Dupree, uh, Meki, Michael Purnell, Michael W. Yee, Miguel Paredes, Mitchell Harris, Mitchell X, Muhammad Albanai, Monte Moore, uh, not Mr. Filter, Nathan, Nathaniel Stevenson, Neb, <clears throat> Page Four, Sancho. Yes. Nell and Zach, Nicholas Kyle, Obi Nobi, Osama Awad, Pat R, Pat McMark, Tim Call, Brody, Unk Fan, Puppet Master Johnson, Raphael, uh, Raw Daddy. <laughs> Rari, Rawiri Sinclair, Reaper God, Ricky Dutcher, RIP Matt Pat, RIP, uh, Robert Rogers, Rocky B. Uh, by the way, I'm so happy that uh, the, the RIP Matt Pat is finally, it's finally creating something. Royce Ruffo, Riley, Sancho wants the Xavier Wood. <laughs> ah, you got you good, Sancho. Santi is a bandwagon for these trains, Lamau. Santi looks like the wish version of Zerge Tekken. Santi <laughs> makes me chum. Santi, 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 Sancho, Santi. Santi, Stinkface, Sadi, Rick, Boog, Screamo, Scott, Semba, Seth, Shaggy, WWE, Shane, Shawn Michaels, Right Nostrils, Sip God, Sir Nightmare, Skyler, uh, Slim, worst character in Breaking Bad, by the way, Skyler, she sucks. Blimsky, Slow Oh, I'm sorry. Someone whose Rodriguez. life got ripped from her or in front of her. You want her to be on didn't board? Back, didn't back her husband. Didn't back you her husband. You want her to be on bad, board for her husband partner. for doing illegal activities with the Did it the for Narcos? the family. Did it for the rock. He did it for himself. Bro, if 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 Sarah did this, I'd be like, babe, he, what do I do? He what could have got out help? earlier and just done it to just get it. But no, he wanted more. Wow. She sucks. Uh, smooth. Solo, I love you. Solo. Solo, fuck you. Summer. Uh, spicy Nuggets. Star Shield Nick. Stephanie Becker, uh, look like contest in my bedroom. Jesus. Go, go, go outside. God. <laughs> Stone Cold Peach Austin, Stucky, Sugar Shane, Sugar, uh, Sugar Malachi Galaxy. The final boss, the first Patreon I crazy dude. You have you watched his is the, <laughs> his, said to me. the the cameo? No. You haven't received it? Dude, this guy has harassed me to make you watch the freaking cameo. The gaming freak YouTube, the underdog, the undertaker's son, the underwear taker. Uh, TM is a Dutch name, which Santi can't say correctly. Thiam, Thiam, whatever, dude. Tobias Burnett, Tom Lehman, Tommy, trying to head to crown. Tyler Free, V. Charles, Juan Pablo, Wesley Simpson, White Mexican, Ouija William, Wissam Kitso, uh, Woe JC, Javier Iscardo, uh, uh, X Deadshot, Zach Griffin, Zay, and Zerg Zito. Thank you all very much for supporting us here at the Wrestling is Cool podcast. Sancho, you're controlling the the, the recording, so you got to get ready to, 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 to end it, all right? Bye. Have a wonderful day. Take care, and goodbye.